I have grown to love this mountain, whether it's raining, snowing occasionally, or uh, blazing hot early in the morning. When you first start in the, in the spring, everything is just new and really beginning. The energy is up here and the people that, f that live here and work here feel that type of energy. You can sit back and then you can appreciate and enjoy the trees and the wind and the birds. I, I think for a farmer, the, the, probably the most exciting time of the year is harvest. When all the grapes are hanging out there and the, and the clusters and the colors and when everything is said and done, it's all done. So you can't wait to get started on the next year again. It's also a pretty time in the fall and winter when the grass is green and the vines are dormant. Late fall, winter, and, and it's early spring when there's a lot of moisture in the air. Clouds are beautiful. You know, this place is really a, a, uh, it's a pretty place. In 1982, a small group of vintners on Howell Mountain applied for the first sub-appellation in the newly created Napa Valley AVA. Of course, going to the government and, and asking for an appellation distinction required a lot of support. Everybody that had vineyard on the mountain all got together. Everyone came over to my house one night, and we laid out our topo maps on the kitchen table. That first night, we all just went over and brought a bottle of wine over and... The maps wanted to roll up and we weighted down all the corners with bo the bottles of wine that we'd brought. S had the maps and drew some lines and said, well, how about here and how about there? And, and I think one of the primary criteria at the time was the 1,400 foot elevation, which was the inversion layer. And, and so the fog has a huge impact on the, on the farming and consequently the wine. Marine layer fog often shrouds the Napa Valley in the late summer and early fall. Its presence points to a major element in what distinguishes the character of mountain grapes from those grown even a few miles away on the valley floor. The story begins in the spring. The vines on Howell Mountain come to life a month later than those in the valley. Throughout the summer, Temperatures on the mountain often average 10 or more degrees cooler than the flatland. Early summer fog is frequent. The mountain fruit develops more slowly. But by mid to late summer, everything changes. Now the overnight marine layer blankets the valley, often lingering till late in the morning. Above the inversion, Nighttime temperatures on Howell Mountain are typically 10 degrees warmer than in the valley. The vines seem to keep on growing during those warmer evenings. So you still have chemical reactions taking place in the grapes without getting photosynthesis. And so if you don't have photosynthesis, you're not getting a huge amount of sugar buildup. So the tannins ripen in conjunction with a sugar accumulation. There's some huge tannins, but they're soft tannins. They're uh, flavors that fill the mouth and just uh, just create this explosion of flavors for you that, that you just love. During the Indian summer days, the extra hours of unobstructed sunlight allow the Howell Mountain grapes to catch up in their ripening cycle. To let the vines really just, just kind of ease into maturity as far as the fruit's concerned. Red volcanic soil. The structure of the dirt plays an equally significant part in the flavor profile of Howell Mountain wines. We have this uh, red clay soil that is rich in minerals but not rich in nutrients. This soil is, has a lot of iron in it and we think it's the iron and the minerals that give us the, the unique flavors. Most of the Howell Mountain vineyards have very little water for irrigation. The roots have to dig and grow and really fight to, uh, to produce the fruit of quality that they do. Because the yields are lower and the berries are smaller, the flavors are more intense. The berries are smaller and so that the per unit area you have more skins that are giving you the, the complexities, the the tannins, the colors that, that red wines need.
Wine lovers may have only recently gained awareness of Howell Mountain as a place, but it has a history that runs deep. In the closing decades of the 19th century, there were numerous vineyards and wineries on the mountain. My great-grandfather was the, the first winemaker in the family, and he was the first one to work on, in Howell Mountain on uh, wine groups. Historically, if you look at Europe, down in the flatlands, what do they grow? They grow the melons, the corn, and stuff like that. They always knew the hillside made great wine, and uh, I think they found out that Hell Mountain made exceptional wine. When Prohibition put an end to the first age of Napa Valley winemaking, the mountain pioneers left behind their ghost wineries. Well, one interesting comment that I had when we were engaging in the restoration of the building was, boy, this would be a lot cheaper if you tore it down and started over because it's difficult to deal with an old building. And, I, and my response would naturally be, you can't take 120 years of history and just flush it down the toilet. No, well, the whole mountain was populated with free-spirited people, and it, they built a history and an early history in the wine business. It took a new generation of growers and vintners, starting in the 1970s, to once again realize the promise of Howell Mountain as a wine-growing region. Today, the several dozen wineries on the mountain reflect a culture where family and lifestyle are integral parts of the winemaking process. They run the gamut from deliberately rustic to aggressively modern proving that there is no single path to quality. But regardless of their diverse styles and divergent business models, the vintners of Howell Mountain are bound by a singular pride of place and by the knowledge of what their mountain fruit affords them in their efforts to make wine that stands above the ordinary. In 2008, the Howell Mountain Vintners Association offered the first Appalachian Collection, a representative group of their wines. I think Howell Mountain wines are, are some of the best because of all the complexity. Really bridging the gap between contemporary luscious winemaking and uh, more robust, earthy, um, rustic qualities as well different personalities, different styles, but I've never seen an Appalachian that had the consistency. The mountain fruit you would expect to be really tannic, but you get beautiful elegance to it. It makes the style of wine that I really like to drink. The flavors, the fruit and spice and pepper flavors, the long lingering um, aftertaste that we expect from these good mountain wines. The, the fruit components are very dark in color. A lot of chocolate and mocha and black cherry, blackberry. And um, along, along with those very charming characters, it's a little bit of a dusty texture, which I think makes for a super complex wine, one that's fantastic uh, with light food or fits delightfully into a nice five course meal. At the end of another growing season, the members of the Howell Mountain Vintners and Growers Association come together to celebrate and to share their wines. To be successful, you all need each other. I came into this business with that attitude and I'll be going out that way. So everybody's got a little bit of voodoo that they all want to tell people, but, but everything else is pretty much an open book and it's, it's wonderful, refreshing. And I think the generosity comes out of the, the pride of knowing they've got a tiger by the tail and it's a good ride. Outside, the vines lay dormant, resting from their long measured race to maturation. The snow, which is another singularity of the mountain environment, holds the sap in its cold embrace, giving time for pause, for reflection on the season's abundance until a new spring arrives, and with it, the promise of a new vintage.